Good morning and hello. I am here with Teddy. We are outside doing some sensory time. Um, I didn't post yesterday our morning learning time. Well, while editing the first two, I realized what a distraction it was me trying to narrate while actually doing. Um, so I'm going to try to film what I'm actually doing and talk about it separately. Um, Mr. was having his morning nap, so I thought I would have a little one-on-one -on -one here, but uh, he's not hearing it. So he's going to do some sensory time while I talk, or he's not going to expect my immediate attention, but I still need to supervise. So, real quick, I'm gonna make him some. Oh my god! I'm gonna make him some oobleck. That's equal parts cornstarch water usually. Um, you can make a little thicker, a little thinner, whatever. But um, I'm gonna mix that up. That I right now I have two cups cornstarch, two cups, two cups water. Is it funny? Did it poop out at mama? Yeah. I'm gonna make this up and then um, under him I have just an old like cookie sheet and I'm gonna pour the sensory experience, the today's oobleck, onto the pan and let him step in it without having to worry about uh, him putting it in his mouth. He can explore that texture. Um, the more exposure his senses have to variety, the better. So, he's exploring everything right now. Feel is a big, big, big one. This is going to feel very interesting, I hope, to him and keep him a little busy. Um, let's see. What did we do this morning? Hold on, I gotta pour this. You can't see his little cookie sheet down here, but uh, whoa. When you think about that stuff, I'll probably take a picture or something. Um, I don't want to move the camera, but teaching baby. Um, I want to be able to explain what I do, what I'm doing, what I'm actually doing that day with baby, but narrating during isn't working out. So I'm going to try and plan what I'm going to do. I kind of wing it um, in making a plan and I'll explain why probably in another video. This one I just really want to talk about um, reading routine, but I'll make another video talking about that. So he's five and a half months old and I've been reading to him since he was born. Like I took books to, to the hospital with me in the hospital bag and read to him even there. Um, that doesn't mean that he has some profound advantage over a child who started reading at six months or whenever. Um, it's, it's just the more the better, really. But if your baby is five and a half months old and you've never read a book in its life, it is not, not, not too late. It, reading is something that you will do for the entire rest of your life. So there's never too, it's never too late to start laying a foundation for good reading and a love for reading yeah um so his reading routine isn't anything too spectacular i pick a couple of books that i put bedside so that i'm reading those same books all week i also have books in the diaper bag living room throughout the house so if i just have a minute with them and i want to occupy him, I will pull out a book and read it. I also encourage everyone else in the house to read to him. Um, he has a lot of older siblings, 
and dad, of course. Um, but I'd like to give the impression that everyone reads and everyone loves it. So that is going to look like stories being read from lots of different people, not just mom, and a happy time while doing it, you know, because it's not necessarily about what's exactly in the book as much as the experience, the language exposure, and the positivity that's built. But his routine, I try to read every morning five days a week, so, but it's not like five books a week because in each reading session I'm usually reading two to three books. Baby books are really short and we've been doing it long enough that his attention span has gotten a little bit longer. I would say I could maybe keep him there for a solid five minutes of reading at this point, which is a really long time for a baby. A really long time. Um, but even if it's a minute or whatever, wh wherever you start, it's going to get longer the more you, the more you read. So I try to do five days a week, um, reading throughout wherever I can fit it in. There's, like I said, books placed, reading when we're out and about. Like, I can remember when my oldest, who's now 17, when we would go to the doctor's office, I would read him books to keep him occupied while we were waiting. Like, when is the last time you saw someone, or you yourself, read stories in a waiting room with your kids? Like, everyone just looks at their phone, right? Or they give the phone to the kid, or they share the phone. I, I just, I don't see books. And I can't say that I was as diligent as I should have been with my, now I guess what I would call my middle, my middle aged kids, my young teens, my preteens. Um, I don't know that I read to them in waiting rooms as much as I did my oldest. And I definitely don't see it now at all. So I try to bring books and read like in waiting times when he's awake. Um, but that's just kind of how I fit it in. It's not anything spectacular. I don't have like a, a curriculum of which books I'm going to read which days. I know which books I want in my library. I want uh, a copy of Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. That's a really good one for the letters. You can point to them, point to each letter as you read them. Um, and it's very sing-songy, so it's, it's captivating for the little ones. I would like I have farm animal books that have the actual picture, like not a drawing or an illustration or an icon, but uh, like a photograph type picture of the animals. Those are, I prefer those over the, the icons, they kind of have to be to a point where they are associating this represents that versus just showing them that. Um, so real pictures are good. I do have a book of like, where's your nose? We use our nose to smell the flowers. Where's your mouth? We use our mouth to taste the ice cream. Um, I don't necessarily read that book word for word, but I do have it and I do pull, keep it out. And I just go over them without the book with them. Like, it's almost like just a reminder. The book reminds me to just go over his, his, uh, little part in a quick session um, and of course I do them throughout throughout the day I'm putting powder on your feet and your five little toes or um, you're kicking your feet narrating you grabbed the blanket with your hand with your left hand you quickly grabbed your blanket with your left hand you quickly grab the gray blanket with your left hand there's so much that you can do with narrating their movements and behaviors and turn it into a language rich experience you can say ouch that hurt or you can say oh my goodness i saw that you fell i bet that that hurts when your knee hits the ground and it scrapes some of your skin we should wash it like there's there's so much that, that you can just kind of 
stuff into any any situation that it's far less knowing a curriculum and a trajectory for which skills go where and far more knowing how to spot a learning opportunity and just stuffing it with anything that you can you can fit really you're 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 looking to build inquisitive children you're not looking to teach the answers you're looking to teach them to have the question so that's the fun part about early childhood as well is there's no there's no test to pass right not until kindergarten if you go to public schooling or pri you know private group schooling um then there, there will be tests to pass. But for now, for preschool, it's all just sort of whatever, whatever you can foster, foster it because they want to learn. They're intrigued, they're inquisitive. And the more positivity you can build into the relationship that they have with inquisition and knowledge seeking, the better they'll do with those behaviors later they'll be seeking the information more so than oh I gotta learn this for tomorrow's test and they by Saturday don't remember what was on it like it's that's not that's not the way to learn and I love that that's not even the way they try to teach early childhood Well, I think he's digging his oobleck down there. Um, that's about it, I suppose, for our routine. Um, oh, I guess there there are a couple other books that I I like to have. Um, always something with rhyming. Always um, some mother goose nursery rhymes. I would like to get more. I have a book that contains like six or eight of them. I'd like to find another book that has some of the other ones that I don't have. Uh, another good one is like a song book if you can get your hands on it. I haven't found one yet since I've been uh, building his library, but I'd like to find one that has the main chorus of the of popular nursery rhymes type songs. Um, I think that that would be a pretty cool thing to have for Jaca, for Jaca, B I N G O, um, Old McDonald. So I'm on the lookout for that. If you don't have one, put it in the comments and let me know. But that's it for our reading routine. We'll be adding more content specific books as he gets a little older. But mainly what I'm working on is building a variety for my library. Um, if you want, to work on your baby's library, go check out Dolly Parton's Imagination Library online. They send a book every month to children all across the country from, I think, birth to five or birth to six. It's super easy to sign up. As, pretty much as long as they come to your area and your children are in the right range, they, they qualify for this this amazing book program so go check that out Dolly I'm not affiliated or anything I just always recommended this to my Head Start parents I've used it for my own kids it's a, it's super cool we don't we don't accumulate books as easily as you might think and this program really helps you stack that library so Dolly Parton imagination library see if they're in your area if your kids are of the right age i'm assuming you have a baby if you're watching this um go sign up your baby and start getting some additional books for your library uh i think that's it i'll be hopefully adding on a clip of our actual learning time but i won't be necessarily narrating it it'll be more hopefully the camera kind of behind him where he doesn't see it so that we can have a more natural experience and he's not distracted by my carrying on and on and on or the camera itself um but i'm 
until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a happy Friday. Happy weekend. Oh, maybe see you guys Monday. <laughs> happy weekend.